Welcome back scholars. This video will be all about pH, at least for high school chemistry. And let's start with the definition of pH. And I'm not actually going to write this as a definition. We don't need to get in all, into all of the details. But for us, pH is approximately equal to the logarithm of the hydronium ion concentration. We don't get, need to get into all of the reasons about why this is approximate rather than equals, but what we do know is that if the concentration goes up, then the pH goes down. I need to say that's the negative log. And for us, for high school chemistry, even for AP chemistry, even for uh, general chemistry, for even chemistry majors in college, they all treat this as though pH is equal to the negative log of, make it even simpler here, the H plus concentration. If you need to worry about the exceptions to this rule, then you'll learn about them later on. But uh, as a first approximation for understanding pH in the model, this is really where it comes from. And the reason why this works, the reason why we think about pH is because water exists in equilibrium with itself, where one of these water molecules, a hydrogen, could suddenly jump over to another water molecule. And this is again an equilibrium or a reversible reaction and in this equilibrium when that 1h plus jumps over you get hydronium ions and you get hydroxide ions the equilibrium constant for this process is known as kw and it is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th when we look at how this happens and we think about how these concentrations change if these two molecules react to make these two ions then the concentrations of these two ions have to be the same in water we could represent each of them as an x and from the definition of the equilibrium constant we know that kw has to be equal to the h plus concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration, which means for us that x squared equals one times 10 to the negative 14th. And if you solve for x, then x equals one times 10 to the negative seventh. And all of this is really only true at about 25 degrees Celsius. In other words, room temperature. And when we come back up into the logarithm here, and if you need it, there will be a separate video for log rules and a reminder about how logarithms work. But when we go up to this definition of pH, and we say that this X equals the H plus concentration, and that the pH equals the negative log of one times 10 to the negative seventh, and let me just leave out the one because anything times one is itself. And from our log rules, we see that the pH here is seven. And so again, this is a neutral solution. This is just pure water. Which is pretty much impossible to achieve. And so you hardly ever see a truly neutral solution of water because there's often other things dissolved in that water, even if it's just gases from the air. But this gives us our balance point to understand pH. And seven is neutral, so what happens if we add more acid into this solution? If we add more acid into this solution and we increase the concentration of H+, then this exponent is going to become more positive may not become completely positive. So let's say that it goes up to 10 to the negative second. 
So this is increased acid. And our pH is going to end up being equal to two. So if we've increased the acid and this is less than seven, then that tells us that pHs less than seven are acidic. And we could go through this same exercise. And what we would see is that pHs greater than seven are alkaline or basic. This then, this definition of pH and this range of pHs for what's acidic and what's alkaline, we can then use to do pH calculations for solutions. And so I'm only going to ask you to do any of these for strong acids or strong bases. So if we have a one molar solution of HCl, this means that my H plus concentration is one molar and my pH is going to be equal to the negative log of one. Well, from log rules, the log of one is zero, so that would be the pH of this solution. Now, realistically, water is going to tend to level this out and that you will probably not actually see the pH get this low within a water solution. But this is what we would calculate. If we had a three times 10 to the negative third molar solution of HI, which is another strong acid, then because it's a strong acid, the H plus concentration would be three times 10 to the negative third molar. And our pH would be equal to the negative log of three times 10 to the negative third. This pH comes out to about 2.5. We can do the same thing with bases. So if we take a 0.02 molar solution of sodium hydroxide, because this is a strong base, my hydroxide ion concentration is 0.02 molar. I can take that concentration and I can take the negative log of it just like I do with pH, but it's going to give me a pOH. So when I take the negative log of 0.02, I get about 1.7. But this is not the pH. This is the pOH. So then we have to think about an important relationship. And that important relationship at room temperature is that pH plus pOH equals 14. So if my pOH is 1.7, what does my pH have to be? You just have to subtract and you get pH equals 12.3, which definitely puts it in the alkaline region. The only other thing really to do here would be to think about reactions, to think about concentrations. Let's say that I have a, um, let's say that I have 0 0.100 liters of a 0 0.200 molar solution of HCl. And I react that with 0 0.150 liters of a 0 0.100 molar solution of NaOH. Well, I know I'm gonna make sodium chloride and water when the HCl and the NaOH react. I know the HCl only has one H, the NaOH only has one hydroxide. So these also react in a one-to-one -one ratio to make the water. So I don't have to worry about any coefficients here, but I do need to think about moles. It's the moles of these compounds that are actually reacting. So my 0.100 liters times 0.2 molar this means I have 0.02 moles of HCl and the 0.150 liters with the 0.1 molar NaOH 
I have 0 0.015 moles of NaOH. So if these react in a one-to-one -one ratio, which one of these reactants is in excess? It is the HCl. How much excess HCl is there? The difference between these would be 0 0.005 moles of HCl are present in excess. So what concentration does that give me? Well, I mixed these two solutions. So I now have that many moles over 0 0.250 liters. So I have to figure out what that concentration is. This leaves me with a 0 0.02 molar HCl solution. And so my pH would be negative log of 0 0.02, which is, again, about 1.7. But notice that this time it is indeed pH. Up here it was pOH. This is still an acidic solution which is what we would expect from leftover HCl, okay? This 0.1 molar NaOH, this would have had a pH of 13. This HCl, this would have had a pH of 0 0.17. So we've taken this solution and this solution and mixed them and we still have an acidic solution at the end. If we had added a little bit more sodium hydroxide, then we could have completely reacted with all of the HCl, could have, possibly, and then we would have a perfectly neutral solution. The only problem comes up in how do you determine when that is completely finished? And so that brings us to our final topic, of titrations. And I'm going to stop here and create a new video.